care. So we have Doug Wood coming up. Doug is uh, Mr. VNXE. If you recall, VNXE is the uh, super simple kindergarten proof box that uh, that Jeremy Burton's kid demonstrated at the <laughs> Mega Launch, John. We had him yeah, on. Yeah. So uh, that was that pretty film. funny. Doug, good to see you. Uh, that, Doug, thanks for coming on the Cube. Doug, this is my partner, co-host John Furrier. Good to meet you. Kindergarten proof. Yes, like that's that. right. So, uh, well, let's see. Uh, Jeremy's son was, uh, how old was he, John? Edward. He was in um, he was fifth just, grade. Yeah, fifth grader? So no, easy a fifth so grader easy can a fifth do it. Grader could do it. Yeah. He was at, yeah and I think it was fifth grader, yeah. No training. <laughs> he, had his, he had his iPad, and he was going crazy, and, uh, and that was fun. He, uh, we had him on in London, and, uh, and VNXE, it's a um, great new product. Uh, we want to hear all about how it's going, but, but let me start with so why did you guys do VNXE? Where did that come from? Well, there was really a couple of different reasons to look at VNXE. Uh, the, the bottom line was we had a number of assets that we needed to converge into more cost-effective packages, even to go mid-tier and up. And then we had the combination of incredible growth in markets we weren't serving adequately. So we needed to combine the technology and the packaging and go after the markets uh, where we saw the strongest growth. Yeah, you really didn't think of EMC as the company with simple storage, did you, um, prior to VNXC? And, of course, you see in the consumerization of IT, we've got iPads and, and iPods and iTouches and everything else, and, and it's really simplified. So um, are you seeing um, new distribution channels uh, for these products, and how are you dealing with that as a company that's you know, known for selling big mainframe class iron? Yeah, and, and I like the fact that you connect simplicity into the channel because the solution couldn't just be that we design product for the IT generalist and it would show up. We had to go out and create a channel for the M and SMB and that same kind of simplicity would serve the needs of that channel. Simplicity that would range across the selling process, the training and certification process. You know, every aspect of what we could do to reduce the effort for our new partners so that they could make more money and work with EMC in a cost-effective way. So it was soup to nuts simplicity. I think one of the things that was exciting about um, our trip to the mega launch, besides the analyst event where Dave cornered Joe Tucci in the hallway and asked him what big data was, um, was that VNX, EMC, is a big iron-like company. They've been servicing storage at a high end, um, real complex systems, software, solutions, great sales force. Now they come in with Pat Gelsinger and they got this, I don't want to say low end, because it's not low end, it's good product, entry level, that's right. product um, that's very channel friendly. So this is a new area for EMC um, going into this channel. So that's a small, medium sized business where cloud and virtualization actually is compelling. So you think about like those solution partners we're talking to and, and the theme seems to, for me, this show is that solution providers are is the big meat on the bone. That's the right. sexy sizzle is, you know, Flash and mm -hmm. Hadoop and big data. But right. cloud is ultimately an SMB value proposition yeah. at, at a, at a big, in a big way. Can you talk about the, the things you're doing around channel? Mm -hmm. How's that changing your partnerships? And uh, what's the outlook? Sure, uh, and, and just to connect to what you say, you know, it's one thing to talk about cloud infrastructure. It's another thing to take cloud-based services and add value to small business. So I think we have an active and rich opportunity for a cloud strategy even at the low end. I mean, consumerization of IT, I mean, think about Google Gmail, for example. People, I have, our, our small business, we use Gmail and other consumer cloud services. So, That's right. So you've got to be services with consumer-like features. So Absolutely. can you elaborate on that? And the, the business model obviously is channel-based. Mm -hmm. What are you guys doing there? And yeah, absolutely. We're, we're excited about Unisphere and its role in this overall process. Uh, Unisphere as a portal uh, knows a lot about the needs of the storage array it interface as well. And Unisphere can do a lot to, to add service value to know the services that would best apply to your array. And those could be SaaS environments, for example. I just want to say uh, welcome back to the Justin.tv uh, and our other syndicators out there. We have. Uh, 
1,700 people watching now, so uh, you, you're going to hear about EMC Corporation in the channel business, which means small, medium-sized business to, to start up entrepreneurs. Uh, Dave, we're seeing this massive change from EMC uh, growing from the storage company to this information infrastructure coming with channel strategy, entry-level products to cloud and big data. I mean, it's changing, it's changing the impact to the consumer side of the business. Yeah, I mean, we were talking about you know, Jeremy Burton's son using an iPad to provision a, a VNXE. Um, I would imagine too, Doug, that the servicing of VNXE and the channel and the, and the customers is different. I mean, people coming in, they might want to use different touch points to interact with EMC. Again, known for a very high touch services culture. Can you talk a little bit about that? I mean, the things like chat and other innovations. Uh, how is that going? What changes have you guys made in that regard? Yeah. Well, we had a couple of different, uh, I think, driving our strategy. For one thing, this audience expected instantaneous response to service and help. They're quite capable on their own, and they're e-savvy as can be. So they expected our service offerings to reflect that. And secondly, in order to make sense out of a volume-based product, you have to take cost out of everything that would get in the way of margin and profitability. And frankly, we set a goal of pulling 90% of the service costs out of that service activities around VNXC. Our early data suggests, you know, early products you consume a bit more time, but we're well on track to reduce that. And that doesn't just benefit EMC, it benefits our partners. More and more of them are becoming service enabled. We can change the economics there and make it compelling for our partners to take service as an expansion to their business and do it profitably. Yeah, John had Tony Kolish on. Uh, from the customer support side of EMC on, what was that, John, maybe a month or two ago? Oh, yeah, he, was um, very, he was great. I mean, he was very and, candid about um, recognizing the, the delivery and value proposition to, to the businesses has to be in these new channels. He talked about social media, he talked about uh, uh, the, the new level of consultancies emerging. That's right. Uh, these new channels, new channels being distribution channels and new channels for services. So, yes. you know, he really has a good vision of the future. I really like him. He's solid. Um, I think that's a bright spot because you guys are, as a company, moving in. Look at the message Joe Tucci's putting out there. EMC is cloud and big data, and they have a lot of muscle. That's right. So now they got good products. So, so I think you know Tony's challenge is going to be Dave to to keep running at the pace of change, and we're seeing a massive amount of innovation. Um, even at the entrepreneur level, but more importantly at the consultants level. I'm seeing more new consultancies emerging yes. um, that are specialists and are, have specialism. I think, yeah. I th yeah. Go ahead. I, I was going to say, working with Tony was a pleasure. He's been involved in the process from the start. And in the way I would describe the problem is from, from big data to small customers, EMC's got your size. And that's what we really have to pull off. And there's similarities and there's a lot of specialization in there. And Tony and his team helped us understand that environment, where the cost was, where the delays on service were, and how we could address them aggressively. Yeah, it's interesting to, to watch the, the VNXE. Now, of course, yet another EMC platform that, that guys like Tony got and his team have to service. I mean, you hear a lot of talk about unified storage and sim simplifying IT, but uh, portfolios are becoming more complex. I mean, and, and they have in the last 20 years become more sure. complex. And I, I don't necessarily see that changing, although maybe, I mean, people talk about, well, VNXE, could scale in theory, maybe slap a fiber channel interface on that someday. Maybe not. I don't know. Um, but what, what do you? What's your take on that, Doug? Could, could can I mean clearly the architecture can go up market yes. and gobble more of that. I, I guess I'd like that as a customer. More simple. That's goodness. But what's your lens tell you there? So the, the reality is, if you look at Rich Napolitano's business and how it segments today from the under 75K USD sort of space that I focus on and the 75K and up that Ken Furson focus on, these businesses are healthy, they're growing, there's a lot of opportunity to innovate, but one of the things we hear loudest from our customers is let's draw value up and down between both, not just from the new business that my team and I created. Drive up the value of app awareness, for example, but drive down the enterprise sophistication and provide it at the cost and complexity of a VNXE. So I think what you will see is a great deal of incremental commonality between VNX and VNXE, 
and you'll still see value in the architectures that they represent today, whether it be a unified integrated model that VNXE is built on, and it will drive up and down, but also the VNX uh, in its unified modular approach, which offers uncommon scale and availability. So I would think about the two as architectural choices over time for the same software with a lot of commonality. Well, I think the two key is, I mean, as I say, storage portfolios are getting more granular, more complex, but at the same time, the challenge is, and you'll hear this, John, from Chad Sackage, is to make storage invisible. Right. You know, make it so that we don't have to worry about what's underneath, and then people, then right. people like us can debate. You know, people in the storage industry can debate, well, is, is my product more unified than your product? At the end of the day, the customer wants simplicity. They want that storage to be you right. know, hidden, essentially, don't they? Yes, absolutely, and we did a lot of research on that. We focused in that area, and we heard a lot about what causes a server-based small business, for example, to reach a tipping point where it needs to make decisions that are disruptive to their overall thought process, even their knowledge base. And a lot of times it was scale, or it was the need to virtualize, or it was the need to consolidate. And in all those different cases, VNXE through Unisphere sought to take storage out of the equation. What if that step, that tipping point, wasn't so disruptive and they could continue, continue in natural language or in the language of their applications to bring on board the capacity and the solutions they need? So instead of becoming a DBA or a storage administrator, they could remain an IT generalist and be quite competent to manage and leverage enterprise class solutions. We're talking to Doug Wood, VP of Entry Systems of EMC. Entry Systems, uh, entry systems at EMC used to be a, a, a ninety thousand dollar Clarion, and now it's now it's a VNXE. And 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 great, Doug, having you on the Cube and talking to you. Uh, really appreciate your insights. Thank you so much. Thanks very much.